welcome to Religious Scientists of the Catholic Church, where we take a look at men and women who exemplify the compatibility of faith and science through their lives as priests and vowed religious, and as scientists who have made significant contributions in their fields of research. Today we're going to take a look at Father Angelo Secchi, a Jesuit priest and a pioneer of astrophysics who fundamentally changed the questions that we ask and the techniques that we use to study stars and other astrophysical phenomena. In addition to his pioneering work in stellar spectroscopy and solar physics, he also made important contributions in terrestrial magnetism, meteorology, and oceanography, to name a few. Angelo Secchi is probably one of the greatest astronomers you've never heard of. Before him, astronomy was measuring the positions of stars, the positions of planets. You wanted to be able to calculate orbits better. You wanted to be able to have these positions in order to do navigation. It was very practical. But he looked at astronomy from the point of view of a physicist. He didn't ask, where are these things? He asked, what are these things? Angelo Secchi was born June 28, 1818 in Reggio Emilia, Italy. When he was 16, he entered the Jesuit order and went to Rome to begin his formation. There he studied extensively, not only in theology and philosophy, but also in science. È molto portato per le discipline scientifiche e di questo i suoi professori si accorgono e quindi lo incoraggiano a studiare scienza, in particolare fisica. He was trained as a Jesuit and also trained in physics so that he'd be teaching high school physics. That's really what he was doing. During his formation, he taught mathematics and physics at the Roman College and at the Jesuit College in Loreto. In 1847, he was ordained a priest. But the next year, due to political unrest, he and other Jesuits were exiled from Rome, and he went first to Stonyhurst in England, and then to Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. Questi due soggiorni molto brevi di Secchi in Inghilterra e negli Stati Uniti sono però importantissimi perché eh, Secchi ha l'opportunità di eh, conoscere nuove lingue, conoscere nuovi personaggi, eh, conoscere nuove istituzioni e eh, nuove teorie scientifiche e eh, mettersi un po', eh, aprire un po' l'orizzonte sul contesto culturale di quel periodo. And at Georgetown, he came in contact with astronomers and learned a little bit of practical astronomy. So when in 1850 he could come back to Rome, they put him at the age of 32 to be in charge of the observatory at the Roman College. Now at the time, the observatory was located atop Torre Calandrelli, a tall, narrow structure on one corner of the campus. Vesecchi recognized that this spindly tower was not stable enough to support the precise work of modern astronomy. What was needed was a solid, stable base upon which to place the observatory. And Secchi found the solution on the opposite corner of the campus, at the Church of St. Ignatius of Loyola. Built in the 17th century, the church was originally intended to support a massive ornate dome that was never built. Instead, it has a flat ceiling painted to resemble the dome by the Jesuit brother Andrea Pozzo. The sturdy columns designed to support this non-existent dome were just the thing the Secchi needed. He had a new observatory complex built atop the church with the telescopes placed directly above these massive pillars. <laughs> E così realizzò oh, attraverso il progetto dell'architetto ingegnere Angelo Vescovati, realizzò questo osservatorio che è uno dei primi osservatori eh, astrofisici del mondo e in particolare è il, il primo osservatorio per l'astrofisica stellare, perché l'astrofisica stellare è nata qui per opera di Angelo Secchi. Secchi fa un grande sforzo di rinnovare la strumentazione astronomica e anche eh, ottiene, acquista un telescopio che in quel momento era uno dei migliori che c'erano in Italia, un rifrattore, un equatoriale Mertz da 
circa 25 cm di apertura. But what to do with the observatory? At the time, astronomy was concerned with astrometry and celestial mechanics, that is, measuring the positions and the brightnesses and the proper motions of stars and other celestial objects. This required a large staff of dedicated astronomers who could make consistent observations night after night. And Secchi's small observatory just couldn't manage this. But he came in as a physicist, not as an astronomer. He believed that physics could be applied to all phenomena, both on Earth and in the skies. He wasn't interested in measuring positions and motions. He wanted to know what stars are and how they work. In short, he wanted to do astrophysics. One of the fields he pioneered was that of stellar spectroscopy. He was aware of Josef von Fraunhofer's observations of the myriad dark lines that appear when you break sunlight into its component colors, and of Gustav Kirchhoff's theory governing the relationship between these lines and the chemical elements responsible for them. And so he acquired a prism which he mounted to the aperture of the Mertz refractor, and he began taking spectra of stars. Cecchi fu tra i primi che analizzò la luce delle stelle, e quindi analizzando lo spettro elettromagnetico, la posizione delle righe spettrali, riuscì a classificare ben 4.000 stelle, e quindi a operare la prima catalogo stellare. This turns out to the, be the beginning of what turned into the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, the stellar classification that we use today. Diventa una base molto importante per tutto il lavoro che verrà poi fatto negli Stati Uniti all'Osservatorio di Harvard, dove verranno poi elaborate ulteriormente le altre classi spettrali, ma la classificazione di Secchi è la base sulla quale verranno modellate tutte le altre classificazioni. Spectroscopy opened up astronomy to a whole new universe of possibilities. Even today it is one of the most powerful tools in astrophysics. It can tell you a star's temperature, velocity, rotation rate, the strength of its magnetic field, and of course atmospheric composition. It can be applied to planets, to stars, to galaxies, and even to the whole universe. It's through spectroscopy that Edwin Hubble later confirmed the expansion of the universe as a result of the Big Bang. Se noi pensiamo che ancora oggi attraverso la spettroscopia noi possiamo analizzare le galassie più lontane agli estremi confini dell'universo, noi comprendiamo come questo strumento è stato estremamente potente. Angelo Secchi was also interested in solar physics. He made myriad observations, spectra, even photographs of sunspots, solar prominences, the corona, and other phenomena. È uno dei primi che usa la fotografia in campo astronomico e questo gli permette appunto di confrontare le foto ottenute durante l'eclissi nel 1860 con fotografie di altri colleghi e notare appunto che le protuberanze solari appaiono nelle eh, fotografie prese a distanza e quindi non sono illusioni ottiche ma sono fenomeni realmente appartenenti al Sole. He published his extensive work on the Sun in a book written in French entitled Le Soleil. And this book later appeared in further editions and was translated into several languages considerato tutt'oggi uno dei più importanti trattati di fisica solare del suo, del suo periodo. He was also the first person to look at planets. He looked at the surface of Mars. And rather than trying to make the orbit of Mars accurate to one more decimal point, he said, what's on the surface? What would it be like to stand on Mars? What chemicals, what spectra do I see when I look at the atmospheres of Uranus or Saturn? He also invented planetary science, the first person to study planets, not as dots of light, but as actual worlds that could be studied in and of themselves. And his observatory was dedicated not just to astrophysics, but to other phenomena such as terrestrial magnetism and meteorology, which he saw as interrelated. Questa visione che Secchi ha da fisico di vedere tutti i fenomeni della natura come una interazione di forze fisiche gli fa dire che è importante studiare i fenomeni astronomici non soltanto 
nella disciplina dell'astronomia, ma guardare anche le loro connessioni con altre discipline scientifiche, per esempio la meteorologia e per esempio il magnetismo terrestre. E se che realizza anche un primo osservatorio magnetico dove portare avanti delle osservazioni regolari delle perturbazioni del campo magnetico terrestre, naturalmente da studiare in correlazione con l'attività solare. One surprising area in which he made an important contribution was that of oceanography. At the invitation of Alexander Chaldi, commander of the Pontifical Navy, he set sail on the Immacolata Concezione and carried out extensive tests on measuring the clarity of ocean water by lowering brightly colored disks into the water until they're no longer visible. This technique is still widely used today, and the simple device is known as a Secchi disk. All of this in a lifetime that was incredibly compressed. And all of this during a time when politics was constantly impeding itself on him. At that time, the Holy See was reduced to the city of Rome, and eventually to just the Vatican. And the government in Italy was terribly anti-clerical. They confiscated all of the church lands in Rome, including the Roman College and the Church of St. Ignatius. But because he was so well respected as a scientist, they allowed Secchi to continue operating his observatory until his death in 1878. At that time, all of his instruments were confiscated and sent to state-run observatories. After his death, Secchi's legacy was largely ignored. In Italy and in Europe, his status as a priest was an inconvenient fact that contradicted the anti-clerical rhetoric of the warfare between religious faith and scientific progress. It was easier to just pretend that he never existed and to give the credit for his contributions to somebody else. Almeno in Italia c'è stato un qualche tipo di boicottaggio di Secchi, perché dobbiamo tener conto che Secchi era amico, era l'astronomo del Papa. Quando lui nel 1878 muore, c'era stata da poco la presa di Roma, quindi il Papa Pio IX si era richiuso in Vaticano. I rapporti tra lo Stato italiano, il governo unitario e la Santa Sede non erano buoni. E così per molti anni eh, eh, la, eh, diciamo, la, gli, gli, gli scienziati italiani hanno ignorato la, la figura dei secchi, quindi c'è stata una specie di censura dovuta al clima diciamo, anticlericale dell'epoca. Even where his memory as a scientist was preserved, his status as a priest was conveniently forgotten. Eccoci qui alla casa dove è nato Angelo Secchi il 28 giugno del 1818. Vediamo proprio questa lapide che ricorda la sua nascita. Astronomo e fisico insigne al mondo, dice quanto possa, con fortuna d'ingegno, virtù di volere. Qui possiamo vedere come si ricordi la sua attività di astronomo, ma non si dica che sia un sacerdote, che sia un gesuita si ricorda l'attività della ricerca che lui ha compiuto, ma questi due aspetti sono dimenticati. And among the English speaking world, there's yet another reason why he's more or less unknown. He wrote a lot of excellent texts, but they never got translated into English. He translated into German, translated into French, never translated into English. The English were desperate enemies of his. They saw him as a rival and where they had you know, the wealth of England supporting them, he was doing all of his work on a shoestring and showing them up. So in particular, Norm Lockyer, the fellow who founded uh, Nature, the, the journal, made sure that none of Secchi's books ever got published in English. In more recent times, Angelo Secchi's legacy is being better remembered. There are craters named for him on the moon and on Mars. The asteroid 4705 Secchi is named in his honor. And the pair of spaceborne solar observatories known as Stereo each carry an instrument called Sun, Earth, Connection, Coronal, and Heliospheric Investigation, or SECI for short. And in his hometown of Reggio Emilia, there's a high school named for him 
and a street in the center of the city. Qui a Reggio Emilia siamo contenti di poter ricordare i 200 anni della nascita di Secchi, anche perché è importante ricordare un esempio positivo di un uomo di chiesa e di un uomo di scienza. Tante volte ricordiamo le tensioni, i problemi che ci sono stati in passato, ma è importante anche ricordare gli esempi positivi, gli esempi di una buona unione fra la scienza, la teologia e la fede.